All right, guys, I've been saying it since the beginning of the year. This year is just hitting differently. Welcome back to Making Everyday Magic. My name is Shauna, and if you are new here, we are a homeschooling family of four who has just finished our seventh year of homeschooling. We have wrapped the 2023-2024 school year for our sixth grader and our second grader. Guys, today I want to share with you my end of year recap. Guys, before we go any further, please scroll down, hit the big red subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. As always, you can find me right on down in the comments or over on Instagram at Making Everyday Magic. This year, this year since the beginning, has just felt different. And I've speculated quite a few times on why that could be. It is possible that while last year gave us a bit more of that kind of return to normal, this year was truly like all of it consistent and even, and it is probably the first full like normal year we've had in our homeschool because of the global situation that actually started us with homeschooling two kids. So like kind of the entirety of that um, dad went back to work after being home for a year. So kind of the entire time we had been homeschooling more than one kid, dad was uh, working in the house, which is just different. Not to mention, um, we didn't really find Timberdoodle or kind of go rogue out on our own until about a year before that global situation. So it just must be that this is really kind of the first opportunity that my family has had to truly, truly be comfortable and in our own element with the entirety of the homeschooling situation. And so it has been, it's been amazing. We have had such a good year. I don't even know how to describe it. It has been wonderful. And I think there's also a certain level of confidence that comes when you have had so many years under your belt. There's a certain level of comfort that comes from that. Everybody in our home knows what to expect. Everybody in our home knows the routine. Everybody in our home uh, knows what's expected of them and what, you know, we're asking them to bring to the table. And so it truly has been such an amazing homeschool year for us. And it's hard for me to kind of pinpoint why, but I think the bulk of it is likely just our circumstances. Um, things have just become truly, truly in a glorious way, comfortable, which is honestly so awesome when you can get to that point. So if you aren't there, it's coming for you. And it just takes time. It just takes time to get to a place where you are truly, truly in your element. And I think that this year, my whole family really has been that way. So it has been, it has been nice. And it probably is honestly our, our first homeschool year with the least amount of change and flux to personal lives. And so it has been, it has been a very, a very good year for us. And there are some things uh, that like I anticipated being harder, uh, like multiplication with my seven-year-old. I anticipated that being like a really big jump. And then, uh, I, and I think we did a good job of setting ourselves up for success with this, but it wasn't as hard as I anticipated it being. And also there are a lot of things that I personally have been working toward and, and our family have been working toward in our home to simplify life. And I do think that that has played a very large role in the tone of our home and therefore our homeschool for this year. So now that being said, the long and the short of it is it's been awesome. It's been a really great year. There are some things that uh, we learned along the way that we won't do again. We won't repeat again. I am actively metering myself from being like, oh, but this is amazing. I should add. Nope. I am purposefully, intentionally trying to keep it simple and chill and laid back for the next year because you can always add more, but it's really hard once you get going to start pulling things out. And so I am actively trying to kind of keep a little bit more of a minimalist approach to the things that I am planning for the 2024-2025 homeschool year. I have shared with you our plans so far. Also coming up, I will have unboxing 
and budgeting and tracking, finally tracking guys. I know you're gonna be so proud of me, uh, but like I came up with like a tracker, it's like a whole thing. Anyways, uh, I'm excited. And I'm, I'm, I'm intentionally keeping myself grounded in this principle of making our lives easier. So that is what I am trying to do. Let's talk through our pieces. So let's start with our group subjects. You guys know I'm obsessed. Mom and me Monday, it's my fave. Uh, big history. We actually finished it and I don't know how. Um, it, was, it was such a daunting and just suffocating a thought it, like it looks amazing and wonderful but it is so much so finding that course available through Khan Academy made it manageable for our home and made it possible for us to get through in a year and for that I am grateful it has been a very fun um, subject to go through together and I've enjoyed it very much US maps my kids really just kind of worked on this on their own a little bit of information it wasn't anything heavy and I'm okay with that uh, Crash Course Mythology um, and Crash Course Biology, both of which we haven't actually finished yet, but they watch them and they enjoy the programming and they really do like the format of the Crash Courses. So I do plan to incorporate some of those for next year and to keep them up maybe even over summer because it's just, it's a really fun and easy, simple way to learn. You guys know that we did, uh, we did complete the, um, 24 like lessons of the cultured kid kind of like a like preschool very very basic very very beginner level spanish course and my family definitely benefited benefited from it greatly my youngest one is uh, still choosing to play the games and do all of that and actually encouraged my oldest to branch into adding in duolingo so she's actually gone quite a bit farther than that so very grateful to the cultured kid for providing us that base and that fun simple way for us to engage in learning something together as a family because i don't think that especially in this day and age outside of homeschool families um but there's not enough emphasis put on communal goals so things that you're working toward for as a family that allows everyone to be searching for that same goal and even just with, you know, the dissolution of fun family game nights, it is such a rewarding experience to be able to work alongside your children to learn something, something where we're all kind of on an even playing field because we're all starting from scratch. So I've enjoyed it. Doing the Spanish program through the Cultured Kid has been a very a very rewarding experience, I think, for our family. The Hygaspi program, you guys know, my kids are very into art. They like art and they like history very much. So the Hygaspi program has been um, very fun for them. I mean, fun isn't the right word, enjoyable. They've enjoyed it very much. And then at one point, and I, I told this story in a, a previous video, but we were, flipping through a magazine. We were waiting on, my oldest daughter wasn't there for some reason, but we're flipping through a magazine with my youngest trying to kill time. And she looks, it was an advertisement for an art gallery in a different part of Texas. And the, the advertisement featured a painting. My youngest daughter was able to tell me that why there was a chair between the viewer and the subject of the painting. And that completely blew my mind. It absolutely blew my mind. So some of the things that they've picked up on from high gas fee, I always get yelled at for saying it too quickly, but I will have it linked down below. Uh, the have I got a story for you program is that they're understanding why art was made different ways in different time periods based on available mediums and available understanding of, of space and concept. It, it really has been very rewarding to watch them develop a different and deeper appreciation for art. If that, I mean, I know that that makes sense because it makes sense to me and therefore that's what matters, but I hope I am relating it in the manner that makes sense to other people. Okay, so we have also done Khan Academy Biology this year, their middle school program, and I am happy to report that we have finished that. And it was simple and good and a nice addition to our home. I like online programs. I like things that are open and go. I like Khan Academy programs, but 
I do believe that, well, I do, I do believe that you could use them kind of full out as your main subject. When we are studying them together, I do feel like they are more of like an enhancement to our education and not, I, I have yet to use them as the entire substance of our education. I think you could, um, I have yet to feel like for what we've chosen and seen and looked at, it would be enough for me, but everybody's standards are different. Okay. I recently, um, had a video and, and this is a, the same across sixth grade and second grade about my love it or leave it curriculum pieces and my appreciation for Michael Clay Thompson this year at the language arts program has gone through the roof. I absolutely love it. It has this year, it has vindicated for me my decision, and I know this is wild, to not stress formal writing early because this is completely different than the way that public schools do it and most programs do it. We have chosen to not focus, stress, um, force onto our children a large amount of writing instruction or expectation. And it's one of those things where I wanted them to one, learn to read. Okay. So get that under your belt, appreciate writings, uh, and reading and poetics and things like that before I was asking them to regurgitate words to a formula, which is what I think most writing instruction has become. Um, and this year, is where, especially with my sixth grader, I am vindicated in that decision because I feel like she has done an amazing job this year with the expectation of writing essays and things like that. The Michael Clay Thompson program, if you don't know, start slow, identifying parts of speech, working up to writing a good sentence, and then writing a good paragraph, and then from there, translating those paragraphs into writing a good essay. So she is just now essay writing in sixth grade, and I feel like it is perfect the way that this program has reinforced my, our decision in our homeschool to not force, you know, lesser quality formulaic writing down their throats and expecting them to output that, uh, as opposed to allowing them to appreciate good writing, if that makes sense. I, ho I hope that makes sense. Um, Caesar's English, I have loved that we have focused on the Caesar's English root words, uh, because I can watch, have seen her piece together the stems and know what big, huge words mean. And for me, that is an amazing foundation for later, for standardized testing, for any kind of academic writing, for things down the road. I know that we've laid the foundation that will help her figure out those more complex words that are in older classic literature and get her to the place she wants to be. Um, as far as her life choices, I know that we are setting her up for whatever she wants to do. We have done this year with our sixth grader, Matthew C. Pre-Algebra. Now, Matthew C. Algebra has gotten a lot of flack for not being good enough or, or not covering enough topics. And so next year, we are actually doing their recently released version of Matthew C. Algebra 1. And I literally just found out yesterday that there is an online in their toolkit, a bridge to Algebra 1, which goes over some of the principles that we'll need for that. So I do think we're going to pick that up over summer just as a little bit of a review while my little one is reviewing her multiplication facts with times tales because she'll be diving into division, which is kind of a big deal. So that is my plan for that. We have had a really good experience um, with... I want to say everything that we've used this year with the exception of discover science. So discover science for both girls. I just don't love it. It is something that could be absolutely wonderful. If that suits your learning style, teaching style, it does not suit ours. It did not make science fun and therefore it is not for us. So we will not be continuing with a textbook based science at any point in the foreseeable future because it just doesn't serve us well. So we're gonna leave that style behind. So let's jump over and talk about my second grader. My second grader finished up the last level of all about reading this year. So we were like, all done with that. We are all done. She like reads, really reads, reads for information, which is like a whole different transition and is wild and crazy. And in conjunction with that, we have been going over the Poodle series. It is now five books for Michael Clay Thompson, which introduce, um, 
basic comma usage, parts of speech, things like that. So it's introducing the parts of grammar, the parts of speech, and she has done exceptionally well with that. So I know that we have laid a good foundation for jumping into the first level of Michael Clay Thompson language arts program for next year. So that is where we will be headed with that. She did do multiplication this year. So math you see is mastery based. So it is all multiplication. She was multiplying like four and five digit numbers by like three and four digit numbers. So it is like all multiplication. I do intend, as I already said, to have her go back over those times tails in the summer so that it is quick, quick, quick when she gets into Delta. Matthew C program, which is all division. So I'm hoping that we've laid just a great foundation that it will be simple and easy and just continue down that path. Now she did do cursive this year and her cursive handwriting is actually really, really good. So I know that she's excited to continue that next year because it's like fancy writing and she loves it so much. Um, her spelling, we've been using all about spelling with her, um, not exclusively. She did do the very first level of spelling UC program, which is basically like CVC words, uh, and then transitioned into the all about spelling program. And her spelling is much better, just kind of inherent, inherently spelling than her sister's was. So I know that that has made a big, a big impact being able to see the same phonograms as in her reading program and tying those two together, I think has made a very big difference for her, for her spelling. There are probably a few other things that I could specifically talk about, but really I've covered the curriculum pieces here and I wanted to talk more about the tone of the year this year, because for me, that is what stands out as being different. This year was different and I hope it continues through to next year. I hope it was good and wonderful and pleasant for you like it was for me. I do feel like the world settling down has made such a big impact on our homeschool um, even though it's in the home, I mean, the world gets in here. So it is nice to know that we can end this year just, just feeling so good. So guys, if you want to hear a little more about any specific one of these pieces, I do, as far as I know, I have a video on every single thing I've talked about here on this channel. Um, or I can uh, follow it up with another video in the summer. So let me know if there's anything specific that you would like to see. Other than that, guys, I hope that you have had a wonderful 2023, 2024 school year. More planning videos are coming up because that is the season that we are in and unboxings and I am excited to get going. So guys, I hope that you found any of this helpful, entertaining or informative. If you did, please scroll down, hit the big red subscribe button and turn on the bell for notifications. As always, you can find me down in the comments or over on Instagram at Making Everyday Magic.